America has spoken, voters have voted, and now a fractured country faces its biggest challenge yet, how to move forward. We have record coronavirus cases surging as it gets colder. We have an undecided Senate with enormous expensive battles to come. And we have a president still unwilling to accept the result of this election. But it's not all bleak. We also have coronavirus vaccine hope. We have a record year for voter turnout. And like them or not, we do have a democratically elected president-elect. So our promise is the same as it was before the election. Politically speaking, we'll get through it all together. From NBC7 News, this is Politically Speaking. Thank you for joining us on Politically Speaking. I'm your host, Danny Freeman. We have an absolutely jam-packed post-election show for you today. We have the first sit-down interview with San Diego Mayor-elect Todd Gloria. Since he won his race in commanding fashion, we talk some of the biggest challenges facing America's finest city. We also have a great story on just how important your vote is if you have not yet been convinced of that fact. But first, we have to tackle all of the drama at the national level, where President Trump has refused for a week to concede he lost this election. To unpack it all, I have a very special guest, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, MSNBC host of Way Too Early, and someone I admire and respect quite a bit, Casey Hunt. Casey, you were on set Saturday morning with Lester, Savannah, and Chuck the moment the race was called for now President-elect Joe Biden. Tell me, were you surprised when it happened or surprised it took as long as it did? A little bit of both. Uh, no, I look, this was something that clearly, you know, our decision desk team had been working so incredibly hard around the clock for several days, and we were obviously keeping in close uh, touch with them. I mean, they are a black box in so much as they make their own decisions, we are not editorially involved. But at the same time, you know, they do keep us up to date about where they are in terms of whether they think they might be able to call something or not. And the reality was the way the votes were coming in, uh, we just got, you know, got to the point where we weren't confident that we could do it on Friday night, even though there had been some sense perhaps that maybe, maybe, maybe we could actually call it on Friday. So by the time we got to Saturday morning, I think we knew that there was enough uh, vote that was coming in, likely from Pennsylvania, that we would probably be able to make a call. I mean, we, we obviously had been disappointed by the, the rate of speed that they were counting the, the ballots in earlier days. Um, but by the time we got there, I think there was a sense that this is what we were what we were here to do. We just we weren't sure if the tallies would end up lining up uh, with that. So. Uh, it was quite a roller coaster of a ride, I have to say. You know, it's, we all we all went into 30 Rock on on Tuesday night, not necessarily knowing what would happen, but I think certainly everyone I was talking to uh, was talking about a Biden landslide, and that obviously, um, it, it, by the time everything is said and done on the presidential side, it may look that way from an electoral college uh, perspective, but it wasn't the total win that many Democrats thought it was going to be across the board, and also House races and Senate races, and that threw things into a little bit more um, turmoil than perhaps we anticipated. And as, as you know, election night turned into election week, Danny. Well, so on that note, last week, the name of the game was waiting for votes. This week, it seems like the name of the game is waiting on the president. Casey, do you anticipate President Trump will ever formally concede in the way that we know it? So I, my, our colleagues at the White House have reported that, no, that's not what's going to happen. And I think if you look back at the president's track record, it's clear he's never really done that. He lost Iowa to Ted Cruz uh, during the primary uh, back in 2016 and in insisted, in fact, uh, you can go back and read the tweets, that Ted Cruz had stolen the election and that he wasn't actually the winner and he never conceded, in fact, that he lost. He still has not conceded that he lost the popular vote to Hillary Clinton in 2016. So I don't think we're going to anticipate something like that. I think what, what certainly Republicans I'm talking to are looking for uh, behind the scenes anyway, is for him to acknowledge uh, that he's not going to contest the results, that he is not, in fact, going to be starting a second uh, Trump term come January 20th uh, when uh, President-elect Biden is set to be inaugurated. Well, Casey, to that point, you, of course, are the Capitol Hill whisperer for NBC News. Do you think there will be a point when staunch Republican allies of the president, say Californian GOP leader Kevin McCarthy, will say, OK, the race is over, Biden won, and it was legitimate? So that's what we've been waiting on all week, Danny. And frankly, the um, 
the, the, the length to which Republicans have been willing to go, I mean, they, they have not gone very far. There have been a handful uh, of senators who have congratulated uh, the former vice president on becoming president-elect. Uh, Mitt Romney was uh, one of the first to do that. And you've had some concerns on national security grounds about the ability to start a transition. But so far what we've seen are Republicans saying the president has the right uh, to pursue any legal remedies or recounts that he may be entitled to, uh, and he can extend uh, that process until uh, all of his options are exhausted. But I think right now the feeling is very much they don't want to upset President Trump more than necessary because they're concerned about how his base of supporters right re might react. And I think the question now is how much of a backlash is there going to be against that? Uh, there are questions about what impact that has on, on national security and also on voters' uh, trust and faith that our elections uh, are conducted freely and fairly. Casey, last thing really quickly, I have to ask the question. You and I, of course, covered Bernie Sanders back in 2016, took many plane rides all over the country following his candidacy then. Do you think Senator Sanders will get a cabinet position in the Biden administration? We did. And uh, Danny, for uh, for viewers who don't know, I, I would I would like to say I loved traveling all over uh, the country with you. We saw very many states and places that you don't normally get a chance to see on the Bernie Sanders uh, campaign trail. Um, we had a blast. Um, and and frankly, your viewers in San Diego have been really lucky to have you for all of this time. Um, but, you know, the, the question is for for Sanders and a cabinet post and the challenge is that the Senate is so narrowly divided and and uh, uh, President elect Joe Biden really can't afford uh, to lose someone. And, and there has been some reporting that perhaps Sanders and Elizabeth Warren would not be selected for cabinet posts because of concern that it would trigger a, a Republican governor appointing someone of the opposite party to fill in a special election that might be a challenge. So I think that's probably the biggest hurdle standing in the way uh, for Bernie Sanders is, is control of the Senate. You know, if, if Democrats had take, you know, one back all the seats that they expected that they might, it might be a different story. Uh, but I think there's a pretty uh, significant understanding that if, if the Senate is 51-49 or 50-50, that everybody is going to be needed uh, right where they are. So uh, I'm interested to see, and, and Danny, you obviously um, have talked to a lot of these folks too, what Sanders supporters think of that and how they want to see Bernie Sanders uh, treated and, and welcomed into any Biden administration. I think it's going to be uh, very telling in terms uh, of how the Biden campaign treats uh, Sanders and, and where those supporters are going to go in four years when, you know, we, we may have, uh, it'll be interesting to see if we have open, open primary races on both, on both sides of the tickets, Republican and Democrat, uh, when 2024 rolls around. Although I'm honestly a little bit too exhausted to start thinking about that in any sort of serious way. So take it for, take that for what you will. Dan. Oh man, 2024 starts today. I mean, you know that. Uh, Casey Hunt, thank you so much for your time. I really hope to see you and talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you so much, Danny. Great to be with you. Straight ahead on Politically Speaking, my colleague Freya Shreether has the first sit-down interview with San Diego Mayor-elect Todd Gloria since he won his competitive race. You're not going to want to miss it. Plus, turnout was high, but what happens when turnout turns into a tie? Stay with us.